Hello everyone and welcome to this video. This is the second set of the match between Hikaru Nakamura and Levon Aronian. Before this set, Levon Aronian had won his first set between these two. So Hikaru Nakamura was in a mass win situation in this set and things were not looking really bright for him as he had lost the first game of this set and so basically he could not afford to lose any more games if he lost any other game he will be out of the Air Things Masters so a Kamura in a must win situation with the white pieces Leon Aronian with the comfortable edge in the scoreboard so Let's see what happens, no? Naka opens with knight f3. We have d5 by Levon, g3, knight f6, bishop g2, and now g6, very solid by Levon with the fianchetto, d3, bishop g7, and now we have bishop d2, the first <laughs> novelty of the game, but Nakamura has to mix it a little bit, no? try some really exotic opening moves like bishop d2 but I mean he, he has to do it yeah knight c6 preparing the e5 move and now queen c1 this is the idea of bishop d2 trying to exchange dark square bishops play h4 h5 and if black castles use checkmate on the h file yeah <laughs> some heck attack like this e5 bishop h6 that was the idea takes takes and now knight e4 very powerful move why is this powerful? Naka goes queen d2. Well, this is powerful because queen g7 is simply not possible. Then queen f6 and you have to trade queens. I mean, the queen has no escapes. The knight is securing the h6 square as well as the f6 square. And also defends the rook at the same time. So if you don't want to lose the queen, you have to trade here. Queen takes, knight takes. And pretty much, pretty much this seals the draw, which Nakamura can only afford to draw one of their remaining three games in this set in order to bounce back and force the tie breaks so Naka is not interested in that after queen after knight e4 he was queen d2 simply avoiding the queen trade and now we have e4 and we see that the knight doesn't have many squares you don't want to go to g1 and go backwards like that 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 would be really ugly losing basically two tempis and in the event of knight h4 well g5 traps the knight so for example, knight h4, g5, and the knight is just trapped. So after e4, you kind of have to take on e4, which means that the queens will are going to be traded anyways, because now your knight is hanging, and there is the tension between the queens, so basically you have to trade queens. So Naka trades. There, there is an argument for the move queen c3 here, which hits the rook on h8. And after, for example, castles and knight fd2 getting out of the attack, we get f5 and now black is just a lot better here with the extra space. This bishop is kind of buried inside the, this massive pawn chain. And black, of course, has a development advantage here. So Naka is not interested in that. He prefers to get some chances in, in this endgame. So queen takes d8, knight takes d8. And now we have knight e4 with the attack on the pawn, so f5. And we see this very nice pawn chain. The pawn on e4 now is defended. Knight c3 developing. And now we get knight e6. We see that our knight on e6 is also securing the c7 square. And at the same time, is offering the trade of this centralized knight of Naka. So Naka plays knight v3. We see that the importance of having our knight on e6 securing the c7 square now after knight b5 there is a6 in plan there is no knight c7 to worry about so knight 6 naka wants to keep as much material as, as possible on the board to keep his chances alive to maybe win if possible we have bishop d7 bishop h3 and now knight f6 the knight goes back simply f3 trying to to attack the 
the head of the pawn structure. Pawn takes, pawn takes, and now long castles, ready to play rook e8 and create a lot of pressure against white's king. So king f2, he sidesteps this, prophylaxis against this rook e8 move. We have b6, bishop f1, trying to enter on a6, bishop c6, to counter this bishop a6 move with bishop b7 simply, rook e1, bringing the rook to the center. Knight d4, offering the trade of knights again, also with the pressure on the f3 pawn, we can see here. Bishop a6 check, bishop b7, Leon of course doesn't mind any trades and he's gonna just uh, be happy. <laughs> Knight takes, rook, sorry, bishop takes, and now the knight is just hanging simply here. So rook d1, Naka defends the knight, rook e8 bringing the last piece into the center. And now a4, intending to, I don't know, create something here, because he basically is in a must win situation. Bishop b7, and now Naka blunders with a5. A better move would be simply h3, stopping this knight e4 idea, because in the game after a5 and knight e4 check, you cannot go to f1 or g2 because the knight 3 will be a fork, for instance, king f1, a3. And that's GG's. And after knight g4, king g2 is the same thing. Yeah, use knight 3 check and thank you very much for the rook. So knight g4 check, king g1 also will not be possible due to this very nice shot. Rook takes d4, and in the event of rook takes, we have bishop takes f3. We can see that apart from attacking the rook on h1. This bishop does a very good job of controlling the e2 squares and the knight is securing the f2 and h2 squares. So rook e1 will be made. That's the threat currently. So basically if white wants to stop this, he has to give up a <laughs> huge material here with rook d1 and now choose whatever rook you want to pick up here is just winning for instance if you take on the one after knight takes it's not possible to rook e1 check and then in the event of king g2 this rook takes the one this very nice shot rook takes and then knight 3 so after this rook d1 move you can pick the whatever, <laughs> whatever rook you want to take there also for example if you take on h1, there is king takes is not possible simply to an f2, and that's gg. So, I mean, it's just completely busted for Naka. So, after an a4, Naka decides to take on g4. Now there's bishop takes h1, and we see that the rook is overloaded here. So, if you take on h1, then the d4 knight is hanging. Naka decides to take on b6 first, intermediate move. Pawn takes simply by Leon, and after G takes F5, because as I already mentioned, the rook is overloaded, has two jobs to make defending the 94 as well as trying to recapture on H1. G takes F5, and now Knight takes. We can see now that after Rook takes D1 and Knight takes D1, Leon is just an exchange up here without so much compensation for Naka. Bishop E4 with a fork on the pawn on c2 as well as the knight on f5 so knight e3 defending the knight and also the pawn on c2 king d7 bringing the king closer to the center because it is in this endgame stage the king is also a very important piece g4 and now rook a8 knight g3 hitting the bishop now bishop g6 just very solid can see that the pawn is already defending this bishop so you don't fall into any <laughs> forks or something and I have five and now Levon says I'm just gonna take on a five and simplify the game state G takes and now King D6 King F3 bringing his King closer King E5 now there's pressure here this rook is coming to a2 here Naka plays one last move before resigning plays king g4 and then 
he throws in the towel <laughs> he resigns here and Levon eliminating Nakamura in the quarterfinals of the Air Things Masters goes directly to the semifinals now with two games to spare which were programmed in this second set but due to Naka losing the first set and now losing this second set 2-0 in the first two games goes down against Levon so close to him for beating Nakamura so I hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching